My name is Patrick Birmingham. I'm a catalog specialist here at the Key West Public Library, and I'm going to be reading The Eleventh Hour, A Curious Mystery by Graham Bass. A book is read, a story ends, a telling tale is told. But who can say what mysteries a single page may hold? A maze of hidden codes and clues, a clock at every turn, and only time will tell what other secrets you may learn. When Horace turned 11, he decided there should be some kind of celebration for my friends, he said, and me. For though I've been the age of eight and nine and six and seven, this is the very first time that I've ever been 11. With that, he set to work and wrote the names of every guest and then 11 sorts of food that elephants like best. He wrote the invitations next and sent them off that day. And finally, 11 games for everyone to play. Now, Horace was a clever lad. He planned the day with care, ensuring that his party would be quite a grand affair. But only in the kitchen was his genius unfurled, for elephants are verily the best cooks in the world. He started off with cheesecake full of strawberries and cream, then moved on through the pastries to a chocolate supreme. And though it may be said, perhaps, that Horace made a mess, the feast that he created was fantastic, nothing less. Twas early in the morning when the party guests arrived, and all were wearing costumes most intriguingly contrived. The pig came as an admiral, the zebra as a punk, the rhino was an astronaut, his spacesuit made of junk. A swan arrived as Princess Pure, a most enchanting sight, bejeweled with rows of precious stones and dressed in purest white. And with her came an Indian, with arrow, spear, and bow, a handsome Bengal tiger, whom no one seemed to know. The mouse came as a musketeer, his head and hat held high, a swagger in his footsteps and a twinkle in his eye. The cat was Cleopatra, queen of Egypt and the Nile, and masquerading as a judge was Sam the crocodile. And then there was a pair of twins, Two sisters, both giraffes, were turned up as angels and received a round of laughs. Their halos shone upon their heads, two shiny golden rings, and from their nylon tutus sprouted painted cardboard wings. The guests were met by Horace as they stepped into the hall. He dressed as a centurion of Rome before the fall. And once inside, they looked around and noticed with a smile the way the hall had been designed in high renaissance style. No sooner had they entered than a rumor filled the air and stopped the conversation as the news spread everywhere. Their host had made a banquet. It was huge, immense in size. And one by one the guests were drawn within to feast their eyes. For there upon the table was the feast that Horace made a wondrous spread of cakes and buns and jugs of lemonade, and in its midst a centerpiece of grand design was placed that left no doubt young Horace had superb artistic taste. But if the guests had hoped to eat the banquet there and then, they soon found out their host had plans for what they'd eat and when, for Horace told them firmly not a crumb would they devour until the time that he had set the 11th hour. The games began at 8.05. A sack race marked the start, with sacks of every size and shape, so everyone took a part. They set off at a cracking pace with Eric to the fore, but close behind the others hopped on trotter, hoof, and paw. They raced across the croquet lawn, then up towards the house. But as they reached the halfway point, the pig tripped on the mouse. He landed with a heavy thud, and several others fell. But Kilroy kept his balance, and went on to win as well. 